Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am at the shop today and uh, a little bit later on Parker will be joining me and we'll probably be getting set up to uh, make the elevator and I've been working on I've been working on this and I have some discoveries that I'm trying to work through. Um, when I put this in position right here and I just rake it forward a little bit like it's supposed to be. My issue is um, this is the blue tape is marking out the 10 inch width of the top of this which my windscreen would be consistent from there all the way down to here and then the sides are supposed to come in from there. Um, <clears throat> where I have an issue is that I cut across right here so I'm actually hitting my instrument panel if I, I can't make a straight line from here all the way back to where this is. So I, I've been going back and forth on like do I make a hoop um, and make that windscreen because that will fit you know that'll fit around this no problem um, uh, and make it a little bit steeper or do I do something uh, that's got a little bit different shape and maybe you can see I've drawn some lines here on the uh, on the side um, basically the line comes here it misses it misses the instrument panel by about three eighths of an inch and it comes to this point and then it tapers back to the 10 inch here and what that would mean is that this piece I would have to make a second um, smaller I think I could make it out a half inch and I could put one another one of these kind of right here where the uh, uh, where the windscreen comes down and the problem is I'm gonna I'm gonna have a a bar across here it, it'll work and I'll be a little bit I'll have a couple different angles but I'll have a uh, then I would have um, a piece on the side here a piece on the side a piece on the side here a piece on the side here I would have the top still going all the way down in one piece but then I would have two separate pieces here at the front the hinges that are going to attach it to the deck not a problem I can miter those to fit together nicely um, the hinges along the top uh, edge, I can do the same. I can miter those to fit together nicely. I will have the uh, uh, just the slight overlap here at the sides to uh, to deal with, um, and I, I believe I can figure that out as well. It's just that it's going to create a just a little bit of a block, but mo mostly on the sides. So. I think what I'm going to do, um, actually I, I believe this to be true, what I'm going to do. I've made up my mind, I believe. <laughs> I'm pretty certain. I think I'm the, this is definitely what I'm going to do, okay. Um, I'm going to mock this up just out of a piece of wood and then I'm going to see, um, just kind of put it, put it on here and then go sit in the cockpit and just see what it looks like, so, okay. So I'll just take some like some quarter inch, uh, quarter inch, three eight square, something like that, and I'll just make the second um, mini roll cage and just put it in place, and then hop in the cockpit and just take a look. So yeah, all right. So that's what I'm going to be working on in a bit. But right now I'm going to sand the. Uh, I've got to get the gussets ready. Um, to put on the other side here and at the same time I've got to seal up this area which I'll probably just do with epoxy it'll it's not that much of an area where I can't just squeegee that in there so um, and then kind of prep this side for for the gussets to go on the other side and I'm trying to uh, I've got a couple things I'm working through I find it interesting that we get uh, eighth inch uh, ply that goes back to from here that goes back and covers here. It's about a half. It's half an inch wide, or sorry, it's an inch and a half wide, and it goes back here. 
it stops here and then there's nothing from here back uh, I am guessing that's just because that's kind of the rudder area but you do get you do get an extra gusset on the bottom um, let me show that to you you do get an extra gusset here on the bottom it's this one right here that actually goes right here and then you get the eighth inch sheeting on the front and then this whole section here gets um, gets sheeted gets an eighth inch strip uh, a strip of eighth inch material inch and a half wide all the way across so I am uh, I am guessing that since this is the rudder area it doesn't get anything on the top side and that this butt joint is just handled by um, this and the uh, sheeting that captures the bottom uh, and it's just not super clear so either way I'll figure that out and I may put a 16th inch gusset or something on the top side just so I feel better so okay all right um, yeah so uh, oh yeah so I've got a I've got to bevel all these gussets here get them ready to go on the bottom side including this one and uh, I'll do that here and then uh, and then I can move on to uh, move on to something else after that all right cool All right, so now I'm just taking some uh, scrap material here and I am mocking up. Uh, uh, I took a measurement earlier to where the, from the deck to the windscreen at that second location, it's about nine and a, nine and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna give that a try here. And First thing I've done is I've just made a couple pieces. I'm going to the outside because that matches the contour, uh, matches the shape of the other one. So that should be good. Right there, I might be a little bit off of that one. And then this one will be over here. Yeah, those will both need to trim a little bit. Um, but then I'll cut the cut the piece that fits in between. It should be that one. <laughs> and this this will simulate. Simulate the half inch tubing. All right, so we'll go flatten these out a little bit. Okay, so Parker's here now, and we are we're in the process of uh, setting up to build the elevator. We've already cut the spar to match the uh, stab, which I have 
sitting on the fuselage um, for effect. <laughs> so uh, it's just fun to look at. So, um, and uh, we were messing around with the geometry of what this is going to be. And actually, what we concluded is we make this structure here to uh, to clear the uh, instrument panel and everything. And what's interesting is once the engine's out here, basically when you're sitting in this position, you're you're looking at the top of the engine right here. So it doesn't really um, it's not really blocking your view much. And when you're so when you're flying, you're in the same situation. You're uh, you're looking down on kind of the top of your engine and that's where this line is. So I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna keep, keep what I've done here. Of course, we won't have this centerpiece. This is just to kind of hold all this in place while we figure this out, which I've got, I've got the math worked out now. So um, I kind of know what, what to do, but basically I'll make a half inch tube piece that will fit right in here. And then um, what we'll do is our, our uh, we'll have this side panel that will go on first and then um, the uh, forward panel will go on here and uh, the other side panel over there and then the forward panel so that it overlaps in the direction the air is flowing. And uh, I'm going to be good with that. So the only, the only thing I still have to figure out is uh, what I want to do in the case of uh, like just how to navigate the instrument panel since I have the access in the rear um, I think what will have to happen is the instrument panel will have to be taken loose from the bottom underneath and then kind of lift it up and uh, rotate it out of there um, and figure it out but the whole thing will ha kind of have to be settled on before I put this in place um, otherwise you just have to remove the uh, you have to remove the, the uh, canopy here in order to access that, which um, could be a pain, but you don't really have to. Uh, you don't really have to um, put every bolt in it um, while you're testing things and making sure everything's working correctly. So uh, I think that's a small. That's kind of a small thing to have to deal with. So uh, yeah. So this is what I'm gonna. This is what I'm going to run with, and it's an extra, extra little piece, but it doesn't cause a lot of harm, and I'm not that upset about how it's going to look. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to actually fit the theme pretty well. So, okay. But right now we're focusing on this, and uh, we've got the gussets ready over there. Uh, on the corner of the table are ready to um, be epoxy to the other side of that along with some strips and uh, yeah that's what we're up to uh, I see there's a spider right there um, and I was almost attacked by a spider last week except it was like this big uh, but I'm gonna well he might be okay for a minute <laughs> So hey, Parker and I shaped the uh, shaped the ribs uh, for the elevator the same way we did for the uh, for the rudder. Um, we just started by cutting the piece to its size and left it uh, as a rectangle, like so. So it would just be cut to length only, where it was cut to fit from the spar back to the trailing edge. And then after that, we used the template. Um, like you saw when we did the rudder and all you do is hold the template to the point at the edge of the board that you just sized and Then you just trace the outline have a center line there so you can line up your center line here and then Just mark a little check mark so you know the orientation what direction the check mark all of them are going to go the same way and Now we're just going to get them We're going to get them in place here and they go go with the check mark to that side. So and now 
what we're doing is we're just going to temporarily uh, just going to temporarily staple this uh, together, and then these staples will come back out uh, because we got to prepare the uh, we have to prepare the, the uh, diagonals. So so what I'm going to do is just take the yeah, trailing edge here. Bring it up, and then we have a scrap piece somewhere, right, Parker? There. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just gonna run this underneath. And that'll. I need to go from the other direction. Just need to create a triangle so this has something to rest on. Uh, just while I staple this temporarily. Line up this end right there. Make sure they're staying. Mm -hmm. Line it up. Okay. Just at the edge. See how? Oh, what, this way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just tell me when you're good. You're good. Right there. Yeah. that all together. I don't mind doing this because uh, um, every one of these areas is going to get a gusset, so once we pull these staples and reposition everything, it's a big deal. It's no big deal, right? Um, we do have the trailing edge. Oh yeah, no, it looks like it's flat. It's following the shape of the airport. Yeah, great.
repeating what we just did. And what we should do before that is go ahead and uh, go ahead and block this thing square. These. Oh yeah. Uh, All of them. Yeah. Um. I think the thing to do is take the square. If they just. Square block in place, and then uh, make a line to the outside here. Once you're up to that line, there you're square. Oh, hey Parker. Well, we actually have a uh, subspar um, in the middle. Then it's going to have to get laminated in there. A subscript? Yep. So, I'm going to pop these out right here. Try to get that piece in there. See how the elevator's got the sub spark. So excited about how fast we were going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it is going to take down. Uh, let's see. So it's going to be a few more than this one. It's going to be this long. Do you have more of that somewhere? Yeah. We'll be right back. We got to cut a piece here. Hey, Parker and I are getting everything squared off now and getting some blocks in place to hold uh, hold everything. And we're just double checking that the uh, ribs are coming off square here. And that looks fantastic. Set to the right of center line because of the angle, the angle bracket that uh, gets connected to the elevator horn um, comes into the middle of this member and goes this way. So your bracket um, 
part that connects to the push rod ends up centered. Um, in order for that to happen, this has to be off center. So, an easy thing to mess up. So, we don't want to do that. Good down here, right? Yeah, we're right on. going from here to here, that one's not long enough, so we know. It's there. That way you can when I set it up here, the first thing I do is I just make a check mark. So we make sure everything, because we'll need that when we go to make this piece yeah. for our template. We'll want to do it on the check side. All right, so this is uh, this is the basic frame all jigged up, and uh, now you just come in and uh, make all the diagonals here to there, there to there, and then uh, here to there, and there to there, there to there, and there to there. Once you get those made, make them the same way. What Parker and I were, was we what we were just talking about. Uh, this is where the monster spider came down the wall. Um, so every time I walk over here and put my back to it, I have to look. It freaks me out a little bit. Um, it was a black widow, in case I didn't mention that earlier. The, uh, um, yeah, one of the things that we, what we were talking about was uh, you make it the same way. You uh, keep your orientation the same so that you're always working off the same side. And um, that's why we have the little check marks on them so that they're, they're, all the checks are to the left. And then um, when you use your template, it's always on the check side so you don't mess anything up that way, especially when you're cutting the ones that have the angles on them because it's kind of easy to get confused which one goes where. So uh, the first thing he'll do is cut it to fit in between on the angles and once it gets fit, then it'll get we'll get the, the part drawn where it gets uh, uh, it gets its trailing edge tapered. So, um, okay, for the for the airfoil shape, of course. <laughs> Nothing. All right, so Parker and I got uh, we got all of this uh, shaped and uh, put in place and 
angled and sanded and um, everything that we needed to do. So the next time we stop by, all the gussets are ready for the other side of the stabilizer over there. And all of that is ready to epoxy together. We'll probably need to get the gussets ready for the top side so that when we epoxy together, we'll put the uh, gussets on. We worked out the math on this and I laid it out over here. Uh, I'll be making this, this one here out of uh, half inch tubing. That'll be the secondary, um, sort of secondary roll cage. Um, and I just realized I can sort of take all this madness down now. And we'll fit that in place once we get this one, the brackets made for the this one and get this one in place. And then we'll get the top piece on and then we'll position that exactly where it's, uh, where it's supposed to be before we drill any holes into the top deck. So um, I'm just going to tuck that down inside. And... Uh, yeah. So, let's see. What are uh, what are your thoughts about all this, Parker? <laughs> thoughts about all this? Yeah. It's a ton of fun. Love being back here working with you, building stuff. Excited to see you get put together. It's definitely a different beast in person than it is on on video. So. Yeah, because when it's uh, you can actually climb in it here. <laughs> so I know you. It's can. a lot more fun. <laughs> it's a lot more fun to climb in it. Yeah, so we made uh, we made really good progress today, and uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Um, we do appreciate it, and hey, uh, we'll we'll catch you later.